The journey with Barcelona in FIFA 23 career mode has begun. Last episode, we signed Juan Foyt. Robert Lewandowski showed what he's all about by getting a goal on his debut. Take a look. Looking for a ball in for Robert Lewandowski. The header is perfect. That's what the goal machine does. Robert Lewandowski puts us into the lead. But then, reality check is Real Madrid in the Clasico outclassed us. No, maybe David Alaba. He's good at free kicks. He's going to jump over it. Cruz is going for it. It's off the post and in. Unbelievable free kick from Tony Cruz. That could sink us in this classical. With just a week and a half to go, we need to think about making signings to improve this team. Because I still don't think we're on the level of Real Madrid. This is our team right now and it's evident. The weakness is Marcus Alonso. I'm still not convinced with him. 53 pace for a left back. Like, it's just not working. It, it just won't work. Balde is good, but can we trust him in the big, big games? I I think in this episode we need to sign a left back could it be someone like alejandro grimaldo a former la masia graduate a former barcelona player he's 82 rated and he's good well we'll definitely consider him it's gonna be a big episode as we're gonna wrap up the transfer window in this one and make that massive signing if you're enjoying this barca career mode drop a like subscribe if you're new around here as well and let's begin firstly boys time to get into a press conference and respond to your comments we're starting off with this one you should give to Stegen the armband because in reality he captained and he was there to win his first UCL with Barca all right guys so last episode I told you guys we need to decide who becomes the Barca captain for the season I like to Stegen's an option but I also feel like nah I'm just I'm just not feeling it for some reason why do I feel like Ronald Araujo is the man for the job the passion he shows for Barcelona he's the kind of player I want to be captain and I always prefer an outfield player to be captain Captain, and I think that's why for this season I'm making a tough call. The Stegen's gonna be pissed, but Ronald Araujo is gonna be our captain for this season. What a moment for the Uruguayan. And would you look at that? We've got Araujo showing up on the screen. Yeah, I wish EA gave him a real game face. Next up for the left back position, you can sign Grimaldo and bring him back to the camp. No, now we spoke about him, but there are other players as well. I do want to keep this series super realistic, and I think you guys appreciated that in the last episode with me signing one. And Foyt, a very realistic transfer. And that's why players like Alfonso Davies, although I saw him a lot in the comment section, I want to steer away from. I want to build my own superstars here at Barcelona. So bringing former players back, like Juan Miranda, who could have possibly succeeded at Barcelona, but for some reason it didn't work out, that could be an option. Juan Miranda, 22 years old. We're going to scout him. Right now in our shortlist for left backs, we've got Juan Miranda, who seems like a very smart choice because of his age. Grimaldo is the more experienced player. Both are really good, but I definitely want to wait and see what kind of overall Miranda is rocking before making a decision. Maybe there's more players to look at. And this comment is huge. Sign Mark Cucurella. It will be funny taking a player from Chelsea. Uh, he got a real face as well, and you've never used him. That's actually true. Players like Miranda, Grimaldo, and you could add Jose Gaia in there as well. I have used them so much in Barca career modes, but for some reason or the other, Cucurella is a player we've never tried. And this might be it. I know in real life he's made the move to Chelsea, but I feel like what if he joined Barcelona back again? That could be a great storyline and look at the hair. He's got a real game face. He's got the crazy hair. I'm so tempted to sign him just for that hairstyle, you know. But yeah, we'll of course make the decision after scouting all three, but I think our left back signing is going to be a player among those three. Later the episode from the last one's going to be Ansu Fati. We had an on and off episode, but Fati scored in both games that we played. Whoa, we've got a really big offer for Ansu Andreas Christensen, but since he's a player that's just joined Barca, I don't want to sell him, but that is big money coming in for one of our backup centre-backs. Remember, the likes of PK and all are gone. I think we'll need the likes of Christensen at the club. Guys, one thing I'm thinking about Marcus Alonso is using him at left-back is not going to be an option. What if I change his position to like a CDM or a central midfielder? A CDM makes more sense. At least he'll be usable then. It'll take 25 weeks, but I think I want to try this out. I'm never going to use him at left-back with 53 pace boys. Nah, it's just not happening. So we'll try something different. A new position. He can be a solid backup option to Kessie in the future. Who knows? His contract's expiring. I'm going to delegate it, but I'm not paying him 160. He's earning about 150,000. We'll pay him literally the same he's earning, but he's not willing to extend his contract. Well, we'll have to negotiate then. Just because I feel like Marcus Alonso could be useful in a new position. Why does he want an important squad role? Ah, uh, well, well, we'll work on his contract once we've signed the left back. I think because he knows Balde is 
is our only other left back. He's trying to take advantage. Manchester United won Dembele on loan. What are these weird transfer offers? I'm not loaning out Dembele. And now, Man City want Ronald Araujo? Bro, the, these, these Premier League clubs with their endless amounts of money, they're coming in for all our players. So, scout reports are back for most of the players. Mark Cucurella, 81 rated. Grimaldo, 82. We don't know the complete details on Miranda. But guys, I'm just feeling there's something right with Mark Cucurella. What if he moved from Brighton to Barcelona and not Chelsea? Let's play through that storyline. I want to do this, boys. I want to do this. He's got a real game face. Do the other players have? Grimaldo has as well. Miranda doesn't. I think we go Cucurella just because of that crazy hairstyle and because he's absolutely fantastic. This could be our first major, major signing. Cucurella is the real deal, but let's not mess this up. Good thing is, at Barca, because of the way things work, we've got a huge chunk of cash to work with. So 40 million, we can easily afford all this, but they want 56.4. We gotta be careful, the tension meter is going up. What about 50 million? Our first 50 million signing at Barcelona, Mark Cucurella, and it's gonna work. Absolutely brilliant. All right, guys, by the looks of things, negotiations are going pretty well for Mark Cucurella. Important squad role, four-year contract length, no release clause has been offered. Contracts-wise, I'm gonna give him 120,000 per week. I think it's a solid offer, a little bit more than what Marcus Alonso earns right now, and it seems like he's happy with it as well. We've made our first blockbuster signing, you could call it. It's not really a superstar signing, but we're still dropping 50 million on it. Mark Cucurella is back at Barcelona. And looks like it's now time for the announcement. Cucurella has arrived. Look at that. He's he's doing his medical and everything. And the, the boss thinks it's all fine. And as you guys can see, Lewandowski and Testegen welcoming Cucurella here. That's cool. Let's see what the game thinks. Was this a good transfer for us? An F? A C. It's given us a C for Mark Cucurella. They, they're saying it's a good price. We'll take that. There you go, boys. It's confirmed. Cucurella is a Barcelona player. 81 rated. Perfect. Perfect. Gonna just straight away chuck a development plan on him. It's gotta be for defensive stats, right? Yeah, absolutely. Marcus Alonso, I'm afraid, is not gonna make the bench anymore. That is our team right now. And guys, I think I'm done with transfers for this first window. Barca in real life have made a ton of signings. We've brought in Cucurella and Void. This is the Barca we're trying to build. And hey, would you look at that? We've already got our first game of the episode against Hitafe. Definitely want to give Cucurella his debut and see what he's all about. We're also gonna try out Bellerin for a game. I want to see that pace. Although he's not as quick as he was in previous FIFAs. We've been using Pedri a fair bit, so let's give him a bit of rest and play Gavi. Also, Rafinha in the last episode was unreal, so he's going to start as well. That's our team. Let's beat Hitafe and get back to winning ways. Need to get back to winning ways in La Liga. We've reinforced the back line with Mark Cucurella. Look at that hairstyle he's got. The wavy hair and everything. I'm excited and he's already beaten a couple of players. Looks for Ansu Fati. Okay. It's a great start. Robert Lewandowski, what a chance. And we almost just scored within the first three minutes. Oh, this is bad. We've been opened up. We've been opened up. But thankfully, Munir El Haddadi, I remember he played for Barcelona at once, but not anymore. Rafinha is trying a few skill moves. Looking for space for that cross. Ansu's header was awful. Okay, this is not looking good. They've signed Ivan Tony. Looks inside. And Hedafe take the lead. Bro, what's happening with us? We lost the game to Real Madrid and we're following it up with this. The worst possible start ever. Nah, there's no way we're going to lose another game. We can't have a disaster class like this. Now, Robert Lewandowski. Why is he dropping so deep? A bit of space for De Jong. Shoots it well. The power shot above the crossbar. I think once again, some of the instructions in Lewandowski are just wrong. We need him to stay central, be the target man and just stay forward, dude. You don't need to track back. We need to sort this out after the game. Robert Lewandowski looking for Cucurella. It's brilliantly done. Does he have a bit of support? He does. Frankie De Jong making the run in behind scoring and Cucurella on his return to Barcelona gets himself an assist. Rafinha and that's a lovely ball for Lewandowski. Ansu's in an even better position. Opens up space. No, he's in the post. How is the chance to get the goal to put us into the lead? I don't know what happens with Rafinha or even Dembele. Whenever we start either one of them, they never do anything. But let's hope Dembele coming off the bench can do damage. Oh, we've been opened up and Porto is very good. Cucurella is trying his best to track back and that's superb defending. Tell you what, for his Barcelona return, He's put in an absolute shift as Dembele comes on as a super sub. Let's get that ball out wide for Usman Dembele and fire it through again to him. Come on. 
Dembele bringing it inside. Chance for a finesse shot. I think Lewandowski got a small touch to it. It's not been Gavi's game as well. On comes Pedri. Plus, I'm bringing on Memphis Depay as an additional goal scoring outlet. Time is running out, guys. We need to do something as we now find Usman Dembele. Going to square this for Robert Lewandowski. And that's what he does best. A goal poacher of the highest order. Lewandowski in the 85th minute scores. And the team goes crazy. Everybody, including Chavis out there celebrating. What a moment. That was the right thing to do. Finding Dembele. A simple cutback. That's what we've got Lewandowski for. Oh my god. They've literally destroyed me there to Stegen in the 89th minute with a huge save. There you go. We needed this win after that embarrassing defeat to Madrid. I really think I need to manually sort out the tactics of this side. Okay, so we, we're playing this. Now, th this is one of the reasons I think why we're, we're not creating those free-flowing chances. Let's reduce our depth down to 50-50. Pressure and heavy touch is fine, but we'll keep our build Build up play balanced and direct passing. Trust me, this way I think we'll create a lot more chances. Also, changing instructions in Lewandowski to keep him stay central and stay forward. That's it. We've also got our wingers with the correct instructions. Midfielder should be fine. Apparently, there's a new instruction for, for CDMs. Which one is it? Like, I don't think CDMs have a new instruction. Is it this one? Like, stick to position? Yeah, I think so. But we'll, we'll keep him on just stay back while attacking. Well, with that, I think now we should be a lot better on the pitch. Also, I've gone ahead and created a second team sheet in case we need to set up, you know, the backup stuff of the team. By the way, a scout report for Juan Miranda. Of course, we're not going to sign him anymore, but I think we made the right choice. He's 76 rated. We've now got transfer deadline day, of course. I don't think we're going to do anything. Oh, what's that? Is that a rumor of Memphis Depay to Porto? No way! They're willing to offer us Pepe? You're kidding me. Is that, is that the Pepe? No, it's not. I thought it was the Madrid Pepe. I'm actually considering this, if you, if you think, you, you know, and I'll tell you why. We don't really need Memphis Depay at the club. I know he's versatile. Barcelona in real life tried to sell him. We've got enough depth in the wing positions with Dembele and Rafinha. And also Ferran Torres. A player like him with so much potential. We haven't used him at all this season. Simply because there aren't enough spots in the team. I think we take the money for Memphis Depay. And I'm considering we should be signing a new striker. Back up to Lewandowski to be the next Lewandowski for us. I think that's the play. So I'm, I'm thinking we sell Memphis. Is the pie. Okay, so I don't really want that Pepe guy. So I'm just going to delegate this. Give me as much money as possible and you can have him. But it's transfer deadline day, so I still don't know what's happening. So they're willing to pay us 56 million for Depay. I'll actually take it. Let that deal go through. That way, Ferran Torres will probably get more game time. And I think it's overall better for us. But I'm really concerned. I don't think Memphis Depay is going to want to move to Porto. Will he accept a step down like that? And there you go. I'm not surprised. I'm absolutely not surprised. I don't think we will be able to ship off Memphis Depay with just five hours to go. Kind of like in real life. Barcelona tried to sell him. It didn't work, but now it might. Because Manchester United want Memphis Depay back again. This was a rumor that apparently was floating around in real life as well. We'll accept it. Surely that's the kind of club Memphis would want to go. Will he be willing to go to Manchester United though? Let's see what happens here. This is interesting now. Another offer. This one's from Everton. We're going to accept it again. We'll let Memphis Depay where he wants to go. The drama on deadline day is nuts. Four hours to go and I have no idea whether Depay will leave the club or stay. Oh, it's done. It's done. I think it's done. Memphis Depay is on his way out. We've got the cutscene and everything. He's gone. Goodbye, Memphis Depay. This cutscene is hilarious. There you go. Xavi <laughs> just casually walking his player out and then back in the dressing room and everything. I think we're going to get an F on this for value because we let him go for really cheap. There you go. But hey, I, I really want to get Ferran Torres into the fold with Memphis Depay. That was not happening. Why has Real Madrid just bid for Frankie de Jong? Get out of here. We don't want any more drama in the trans window. Let's just get it done with. Deadline day time. Let's get this sorted. There you go. The transfer window has been shot. Memphis Depay has left. We've got our squad sorted for the rest of the season. It's not the strongest you could think of because I feel like there could have been more improvements but you know what? I think it's 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 good. I don't know why it was on my second team sheet but yeah, I think this squad is still good. Remember the youth scouts we sent out in the last episode? So, well, he's got us some talents. Javier Villa, 74 to 94 potential. His overall is already good. He's valued at 900,000 at the age of 15. We're signing him up. Right now, the academy is looking good. We've got a goalkeeper. His potential is kind of dip, which is frustrating, but he's 67 rated, to be honest. Like, I think he should be a lot better than we think. But look at 
Villa. He's going to be a really good camp. Maybe slowly we'll start bringing the academy players into the first team at some point. Well, now that all the transfer window madness is done, it's time to focus back on La Liga and get back to climbing the table. We've got Cadiz Club the Football next, which should be interesting. I am going to give Ferran Torres a chance in this game. Also, Dembele's back in the starting 11. Pedri de Jong do. I also want to use Busquets a little bit. How about giving Christensen a run out? And also Balde. There we go, guys. It's Barcelona versus Cadiz. We need to start asserting our authority over games, man. Now we've got the new tactics as well. We need a big win here. There we go. Usman Dembele. Look at Robert Lewandowski's run. It's brilliant. He tries to attack it, but gets taken out. Ref, come on. Maybe looking for an option to go for a rocket strike. Oh my God. Usman Dembele. I went for the new feature, the power shot. And he absolutely slammed that in the back of the net. Bro, what a strike from Dembele. Space opened up. The XG for that was zero. But he smacked that one. And I think Pedri played a big part in that. Because it nutmegged him. And the keeper was bamboozled because of it. The fans are losing their minds. That is a potential goal of the season contender. Yes, that's the first one we're seeing. And Dembele has done a madness. Yo, the new tactics are really working. I'm finding more spaces. I just feel like the team is clicking this way. Although now we've got a defensive thing to do. And well, Busquets with a strong challenge. And now on the breakaway, here goes Usman Dembele. This is what we want to see from him as he struggles but keeps possession. And could look for a cross. In for Ferran. And what did Ferran just do there? De Jong looking to slide this one for... Usman Dembele who goes for a fake shot. Skips past his man. It's a lovely cross for Ferran Torres who went for the bike. Can you imagine if we pulled that off? Busquets is actually having a really good game as Dembele looks for Ferran Torres. Controls it well on the volley. It's a lovely finish. We're finally getting into rhythm with this Barcelona team. Absolutely brilliant from Ferran. I told you, I just felt like Memphis Depay wasn't clicking. And he was a player that was so good that we needed to keep him on the bench. But he didn't fit what we're trying to build. Much better to get rid of him and give Ferran more opportunities. And look at that, it's already paying dividends. Right now, Alvaro Negredo going for a goal. He almost got a goal back. Oh no, I've just made a massive goalkeeper error there. And they're going to get a free goal because of it. I'm an idiot. I am just an idiot. Uh-oh, uh-oh. They've got a massive chance to stay in again. Oh, my God. Oh, Ferran Torres. Lovely stuff. A little shimmy there. And he's bringing it forward as he looks for Robert Lewandowski. Controls it. Not really well. De Jong gets a chance. And a free goal from Frenkie De Jong. Shocking goalkeeping from the Caddy's keeper. But we take that. Now Usman Dembele looking inside for Robert Lewandowski. It's clever football. And the goal machine gets yet another goal. Caddy simply can't compete. Ferran Torres cleverly looking to find Robert Lewandowski. Going for a finesse shot. He wants that hat trick. Ferran Torres opening up space. And the keeper makes another brilliant save. I'm trying to score finesse shots. But I feel like they're not as OP as they once were in this year's FIFA. This was hands down our best performance with Barca. Oh, I'm seeing the Champions League menus. It's happening. Champions League with Barcelona is about to begin. Before we get into all the Champions League stuff, look at this. We've now grinded our way to third spot in La Liga, just one point off Madrid. By the way, credit where credit's due. Ferran Torres really impressed me against, of course, Cadiz. So maybe we'll see more of him, man, honestly. This is Barcelona's Champions League group, even in real life. And our first game itself is going to be a test. A massive, massive test. Against Bayern, I think we're going to really find out what this team is all about. I believe as of now, this is our best 11, considering everything. And let's see if we can compete with a monstrous Bayern team, with the likes of Anthony Martial up top, Thomas Muller in there as well, De Ligt, Lucas Hernandez, Kimmich and Alfonso Davies. Their team is good. This is going to be the big game, and I'm eager to see what happens. Yo, we go boys the two teams are walking out at the Allianz Arena first Champions League game of the season earlier I did say my main focus is to get back to winning La Liga but it's Barcelona you're expected to even win the Champions League so if we can show that we can compete with Bayern it'd be good this will be our first big test since that defeat to Madrid let's show the world that we've learned from that game by the way don't you forget Lewandowski is up against his former club he will have a lot of motivation, but right now, it's Usman Dembele looking to break through. 
Delict is so good. Ansu Fati has broken through. Ansu Fati has broken through. It's a big moment. He couldn't get his shot off. Now it's Bayern Munich running through. Anthony Martial broken through. And he gets the goal. <sighs> we concede first. Against the big boys, I still can't figure out a way to win. Of course, the game has just started, boys. It's only 13 minutes. There's still a lot of time we can get back in this. Ansu Fati with a bit of trickery as he tries to just move the ball in and around. Looking for a bit of support. Cucurella comes in. Maybe an early cross for Dembele. Who attacked it. But it was just not good enough. Oh, Lewandowski might get the loose ball. I can't go for the chip. He couldn't get there first. Manuel Neuer. The sweeper keeper. Lewandowski looking for De Jong. Now it's Pedri. Oh, that turn was nice. Pedri. Oh, he's managed to slot it home. What a finish from Pedri. He squeezed that in near post. He's a magician. Our first goal in the Champions League had to come from a special, special talent in Pedri. I still don't know how he squeezed that in. Cucurella? Oh, the defense had no idea. Cucurella's broken through. What a chance for him. And he's put it wide. No, that would have been his first goal in a Barca shirt. Ah, that's an L. Dembele looking for Robert Lewandowski against his former club. Heavy Dutch, but he goes for the chip. Manuel Neuer stops him. Oh, they've broken through. They've broken through. Conde's made a mistake. Anthony Martial with the chance. And Anthony Martial is actually ruthless. What a signing from Bayern. They're 2-1 up. Juan Foyt is really struggling for stamina, guys. But he's trying his best. I think we need changes. That's why now in the Champions League, you can make five changes. And we're going to make use of it. Rafinha is going to come on for Dembele. Lewandowski has not been on it in this game. And it's, you know what? Against this former club, let's keep him on. Plus, we might need that goal poaching ability. I'm going to bring on Gavi for De Jong. Uh, Bellerin for Voigt. That's three changes. We can make a couple more. But I think I want to keep it as is. By the way, I'll say this. This has been a lot better than the Madrid defeat. Because I feel like we're actually competing. Saying that, Ronald Araujo is trying his best to keep up with Anthony Martial but he just can't and we made the challenge in the end Muller looking inside and Musiala scores and Bayern you give them a little bit of space and they punish you against the big teams I'm still struggling looks to bring the ball inside this is what he's really good at still Rafinha can slide this one through for Ansu Fati but the first touch let him down so much there that's that full time another reality check we've played two big games this season We've lost both. The trans window is shut. We can't sign players to improve this team. We're going to have to figure out the best tactical way to play with this team and get results. Well, next episode onwards, let's figure that out. I'll catch you guys then. Peace.